What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to discuss why every single one of you guys should learn how to use Vim. So let us get right into it. All right, now when most people think about Vim or VI, they think about this very basic featureless terminal editor that they don't know how to exit. And I understand why this is the case, because most people are never taught the potential of Vim. They never learn how to properly use Vim and what Vim can do for them. The experience that most people have with Vim is that they open a terminal at some point in time, either on their desktop operating system or on a server, and they want to edit the file and they hear or read somewhere that they can use Vim to do that. And they type VI uh, and then test file.txt, for example, is the file they want to edit. And then they're in the file and they don't know what to do because they start typing, nothing happens. At some point, they accidentally press some button and they start typing. They don't understand why. Then they discover they can leave this mode again with escape. And then they want to exit the editor. They want to save the file, but somehow nothing works. They close the terminal window. They're pissed off. They open it again. They go to the same file and just use nano. That is what most people associate with Vim, this frustration to not know how to exit it, to not know how to save the file, and that's basically it. Now, in this video today, I want to show you why Vim is a very powerful tool and why you should definitely learn Vim as a programmer. And it is a steep learning curve. There's actually even a meme about this or an image about this, which I have downloaded here. Uh, so classical learning curves for some common editors. And you will see here, you have Notepad, you have some editor that I don't know about, you have Visual Studio, you have Emacs, which is very funny. And then you have Vim, basically a straight line, 90 degrees up. You basically feel frustrated all the time, but once you got it, you're up here and it's very, very powerful. So in this video today, I wanna to focus on three major reasons for why Vim can massively improve your life as a programmer. And I'm not gonna go through them in a bullet point way. So I'm not gonna say one, two, three, I'm gonna somehow mix them together here. Uh, and we're going to explore Vim on the fly. So what I need to mention here up front is I have NeoVim installed. This is a more uh, modern version of Vim. I have a lot of plugins in it. So when you open my Vim version, it actually opens up uh, NeoVim. So if I open up a file here again, test file.txt, um, I have here a file explorer, I have um, other plugins here installed as well. So this is not the basic Vim version, which is already kind of a point that's interesting about Vim and about NeoVim is you can install plugins, you can customize your editor exactly the way you want. Also, this line down here, this airline down here is completely customizable, you can make your editor the way you want it to be. But that's not even a reason that I want to talk about today. That's nice for using Vim in the terminal. If you want to have a customizable editor, that's very nice. But that is not the power of Vim. The power of Vim is actually in the key binds. So what do I mean by key binds? Now, let me just exit this file here. By the way, you can exit a file by typing colon Q. This is not going to be a Vim tutorial. I have many videos on this channel about Vim. You can check them out if you want to, if you want to learn how to use it. In this video today, I want to focus on why to use it, not how to use it. So let's say I open up a Python file here. My new script.py is going to be the file. And now I'm going to just write some code here. Now, if you write all of this in an ordinary editor without Vim bindings, what you do is basically you already start in the so-called insert mode. So in Vim, you have an insert mode, a normal mode, a visual mode, and the insert mode in Vim is basically a normal editor mode. So I can just type here. I can use all the characters as characters, basically. That is what you have in basically every other editor as well. You just type and then when you're done, you save and you exit. Now, if I were to write code here, I would just say something like, I don't know, uh, import something like import NumPy, for example. And then I would say, I don't know, import NumPy SMP. Then I would define here some, um, some dictionary, my dictionary. And then I would say, I have some, some key value pairs in here. For example, I could say my key one colon my key two, oh, or actually my value one, sorry. And then what I would do to copy this in a normal editors, I would in this, in this case, I cannot do it because it's a Vim and it works in a different way. But I would just take my mouse or I would use shift and the arrow keys to mark all this, then I would do control C, I would go down one line, I would do control V. That is how you do it in ordinary editors. 
Now in Vim, for example, there's a key bind YYP, and then it just copies the line down. So I can do it like that. And then what you do in ordinary editors is you have to use the arrow keys to navigate to the end of the word, or you have to use the mouse. Uh, then you basically delete, you enter the new number here, for example. And in Vim, you have key binds like I just focus on this, I say R5, or I say R6, or I say R9, whatever, I change the character. And also, I don't have to use the arrow keys to jump to the end of the word, I can just in normal mode, press E to jump to the end of the word. And if I'm up here, and I want to jump to this here, I don't have to do this, I can just do WW a couple of times until I'm here, or I can use uppercase W to be there even faster. Now, let's say I want to change something in between these quotation marks here, what do you do in an ordinary editor, you basically use your mouse to mark what's inside, or you just go here and you press backspace a couple of times. What you can do in Vim is you can just go somewhere inside of these uh, quotation marks. And I can say with a certain combination of key presses, in this case, C, I and quotation, uh, I can say change the inner content of the quotation. So C, I quotation mark, and this removes everything and puts me into insert mode again. Uh, I can also just delete it, this would be D, I quotation, it, it deletes the content without putting me into insert mode again. Now, let's say I want to edit the whole content of the curly brackets. So instead of just going here, selecting all this and deleting it, I can go at any point at any uh, location inside here, and I can say change inner, uh, change inner, sorry, wrong character change inner curly bracket, and this removes everything and puts me into insert mode, I can delete whole lines by saying DD. And this is just an example here, right, I can also jump to certain characters. So I can say, uh, let's say I have some spaces in here, I'm just writing something now here. And then let's say I have some colon here as well. And then I have some stuff here again. If I'm here, I can jump to the next colon by saying T, and then colon, this jumps in front of it. If I want to jump exactly to the colon, I would say F and colon, I would jump exactly to that. If I want to jump to the third colon, what I would do is I would say three T colon. And you know, this might seem super complex for someone who's not used to it. And this is why it says here, in this uh, image that the learning curve for Vim is super steep. Because in the beginning, everything I'm showing you now, and again, it's not a tutorial, I'm not going to explain all the different key binds here step by step. But at the end of the day, those all seem very confusing, because what you're used to do if you've never used Vim, and if you're not used to using Vim is you go into your quotations, you mark them, you press the uh, delete key, and that's it. That's how you do things. Or you just go here, and you just uh, press backspace a couple of times. It seems very complex to you in the beginning to say CI quotation mark, uh, to delete the content here, it doesn't seem natural, you have to think about this all the time, this slows you down as a programmer, of course, so why is Vim useful when it slows me down, of course, it's stupid. And the same goes for all the other key binds, you know, and of course, you can also combine these key binds. So you cannot just say T colon to jump to the colon, you can also say CT colon to change everything from the current point to the colon. So I'm now at the E, if I say CT colon, it basically deletes everything up until this colon and allows me to enter new stuff here. Um, so those are just some examples, there's much, much more to it. And another reason, actually, this is kind of related to this first reason is that you also have very advanced things that you can do. So it's not just key binds that you can do, or that you can use, you can also use more complex structures like macros, for example. So a macro is I start recording something. So I say Q a to record the macro a you can see down here to record the macro a. And what I do now, all the, the, the key binds that I'm doing now, all these fancy Vim key binds are now being recorded. So for example, I can do something like, um, maybe before I record, let me stop the recording here, let me copy this line here a couple of times. Um, I will start recording now again. And let's say now, what I want to do is I want to delete everything from the second word of the line up until the first colon. What I would do is, for example, I press zero to move to the beginning of the line, I press W to jump to the first word, W again, W again, W again, then I'm at this word here, I could just use uh, uppercase W to jump immediately uh, to the to the next word. And then I would say D T colon. And then I could stop recording, for example. Now, this macro, it was a very simple one, there are much more complex ones that I use on a daily basis. 
but this was a very simple macro and I can now execute it, re-execute what I just recorded. So I'm in the second line now, I can just say at A to basically repeat this macro at all these different lines. And the lines don't have to be exactly the same. I can also, of course, delete all this here. I can add some new stuff in the end. The macro will work the same way. Just add A and it does what it does, basically. It jumps to the first point, jumps to the colon, and then, uh, yeah, there you go. So this is the power of them. You have certain structures, you have certain key binds, and the list is large. Maybe right now you can see here a Vim cheat sheet with the different commands for beginners. Again, I have uh, multiple tutorials on this channel explaining basic Vim stuff, explaining uh, macros in detail, explaining marks. Marks are also a good concept. You can have marks, which you can set by uh, pressing MA. This basically means now that where the cursor, uh, cursor is right now, is the mark A and I can go somewhere else now and I can say jump to A and this jumps to the same line. So I can say here mark B and I can say jump B jumps to the same line and I can also do this with uppercase characters across files so I can jump into different files and stuff like that. It is super comprehensive. The learning curve is very steep. One thing that you should not expect from Vim is watching a tutorial today, practicing for two days and being a Vim god. This is not going to happen but also you're not going to need half a year. You're going to need maybe three weeks of using Vim a lot and then you're going to be super comfortable using it. I cannot program without Vim anymore. This is super, super difficult for me to program without Vim bindings. It's disgusting, literally it's disgusting because I hate having to do stuff like this. I, I just cannot stand it. Um, also, by the way, you have certain plugins and certain settings that you can use to easily comment out lines. For example, GCC comments out the line, GCC or marking an area GC comments out the area. Uh, stuff like surrounding things. I want to surround this with quotation marks. What do you do if you don't have them? You go to the beginning, you enter a quotation mark, you go to the end, you enter a quotation mark. With Vim, what you do is you go at some point in the word and you just type a sequence that surrounds the word with quotations. And of course, when you do this a couple of times, it's going to run on autopilot. You don't think about this. I, when I code, I don't think about um, when I'm in here, I want to change the content inside of the uh, quotations. I don't think about, oh, what was the command again? Let me look it up or something. I just type it. Okay, now I mistyped, sorry. <laughs> uh, I just type it. I don't think about this. I just do it automatically. And this speeds up my coding massively. Um, also, one example, uh, one benefit here, which does not apply to me necessarily, because I myself am not a 10 finger typer. But if you're someone who types with 10 fingers, you usually don't want to leave the the key space, you don't want to jump to the arrow keys, you want, don't want to necessarily jump to the mouse a lot. And you don't have to use the arrow keys here to navigate in Vim, you can also use K for up J for down L for right and H for left. And this again, it requires uh, you need to get comfortable doing that you need to get into the habit of doing that. But once you have it, you don't basically have to leave your main keys, you don't have to use arrow keys anymore. Um, yeah, so that's just that's just the, the biggest reason for me. And it goes very well with the other reason, the second reason, or actually the third reason now, since I already mentioned uh, the macros and the marks, the, the third reason is a very important one, Vim is available everywhere, almost everywhere you don't have to use Vim as Vim. Now, this is a benefit of Vim, of course, when you go to any Linux server, even though I have now NeoVim with the plugins, when you go to any server, you will find Vim there, you will at least find VI there, it's almost impossible to not find VI on a server. And VI has the Vim key bindings or the VI key bindings. So everything that you're now used to, you can use on every single basic Linux server that you connect to, you can almost use it everywhere. And everywhere doesn't just mean in every terminal, you can incorporate Vim bindings in almost any application. PyCharm, for example, if I have a file in here, test.py, you've probably noticed in my videos, you can see this cursor here, this is Vim. This is Vim, I can do the same stuff here as well, I can move backwards, I can jump words, I can change inner words, I can have uh, brackets with stuff in it in them and I can replace that stuff. I have the Vim bindings here in PyCharm as well. And I have them in all the editors I use, I can have idea Vim here, enabled, as you can see, 
and I have my Vim, Vim config for PyCharm. It even works with some of the plugins. I can comment out lines with GCC. Um, same goes for VS Code. You have Vim bindings in VS Code. You have Vim bindings in RStudio. You have Vim bindings in Jupyter Notebooks if you install them. You have Vim bindings even in Code Wars. When I do the coding challenges, I have Vim bindings enabled. Vim bindings are very popular and they're available in many different editors. So learning Vim is not just learning a terminal tool that you probably don't want to use, it's learning key binds. That is what Vim is for me. Vim is of course the editor in the terminal that you can customize, but that's not even why it's beneficial to you. Because I myself, I use Vim in the terminal, I use new Vim in the terminal, but not that often. I more often use PyCharm with the Vim bindings and the magic is actually in the Vim bindings, not in the Vim application itself. But having these key binds, having these change inner something, jump to this, jump to that, uh, change this and do this automatically. It's just super powerful macro, super powerful. And this is just something that will speed up your coding so, so much. Um, and of course, the extra reason here that I want to mention, this is not necessarily a serious reason. But the extra reason is, of course, at the end of the day, you look like a pro and you look like someone who knows what they're doing if you're using Vim bindings, because you're coding faster, you're coding in a confusing way to anyone who watches it doesn't know Vim, they think what the hell is happening? Why is he changing the content of this? What is he pressing all the time? Why is he pressing keys and nothing is happening on the screen? And all of a sudden, everything is the way he wants it to be. And I don't understand anything what's uh, what's happening. It just looks like you're competent, especially if you have Linux as your main operating system, and you know how to use Vim, you look like someone who knows what they're doing. That's just an extra reason here. Uh, but yeah, I encourage you guys, all of you guys to learn Vim, to learn the, uh, the Vim key binds. And the best way to do it, in my opinion, is to just install Vim, install NeoVim, start with core Vim, don't use necessarily uh, any fancy plugins, just start with core Vim and try to do your coding, your everyday coding in Vim, in the terminal Vim application, and get used to it. Uh, you can watch my tutorials, you can watch tutorials of other people on how to get into Vim. It's really, really worth it. Even though it's going to suck in the beginning, you're not going to like it in the beginning. It's really worth it. It's going to speed up your coding massively. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in a comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.